more or less uh, reliable, I think. And uh, but the next thing is indeed so. Okay, what what is what is going to happen with the whole editor? And um, and this is where uh, indeed Frank has already spoken about the code having been programmed in many generations. It's the same with our inter old interface. It has many different styles. It needs a it needs a much more coherent uh, approach. There is these these horrible uh, uh, you know like libraries that you cut something and you you. you totally can destroy your whole setup. You all must know about this uh, nightmare situation. Of course, uh, Frank is now going to implement a lot of the standard Apple things. Immediately you see that it puts a design element that is almost beyond our choice in the program, but it is a lot safer. It is long, it's, it's really developed for what it's meant for. And Frank designed this stuff when that stuff wasn't available and it had to be done and it was extremely fast and good at that time, but of course being the, the only programmer and with me only telling him what, what yes and no maybe uh, and not being a programmer help, it, it was a lot of work. So Frank now is using much more standard approach. We, we decided, okay, let's get away a little bit with our own uh, design uh, ideals as far as they have been consistent with their work and so use much more standard Apple features and toolboxes that are available. So the looks, uh, uh, we, we will try and see what can be done. We might get help also from from a person who has like a real interface design uh, background more than we do. But it is really about the functionality that we still have to make a lot of decisions. We, we tend to think that if junction can be under the hood, you know, you might not even notice like all the functionality that you have now could still be available in a way you see it now, but it could be done by junction. On the other hand, if you go into those specific gestural interpretation functions that uh, junction represent, then you know if you really want to know about it, you can go deep in it and, and really program in a much more uh, refined manner your the relationship between your gestures and, and, and you know, the control, so to say. So, we tend to think until now that it is a good idea to put junction in there uh, and, it, and still to have like panels on which you can just see those functions in a much more meta-like manner than you would if you would go into junction. We started junction as, as a, a kind of other type of visual programming language uh, in the hope that it would be less cluttery than, than what happens when you work in max MSP. And of course, we run in huge troubles at the moment that we wanted to make it a real programming language. And by now, Junction has like really strong programming capacities. But of course, it has uh, also gone increasingly, increasingly uh, complicated. And so, there also in Junction is that need to have a meta structure on top. So you see, there is a different approach already in this player to say that. You know, we want a kind of dashboard. So this idea of having Lisa uh, having a whole lot of stuff being under the hood, which is easy to open up right away. It's a bit one step in between right now. But in the future, you would be able to open another window and have all the editor stuff. But to have a, a dashboard like this, which uh, you could also hopefully design yourself. You know, you, you could. You could add some of the stuff you really need. We, we bring out stuff as much as possible. But this is the dashboard. This is like at a generic level. But we want to have the dashboard on top. That is at a preset level where you only see the things that you think are useful. So we will provide some basic setups and presets, as I said before. But you will be able to design your own preset dashboard also where you know the information you want to see it if you want it like bulky big so you can do it without your glasses or from a big distance you can see it you can design it yourself so those are uh, like big the bigger design topics that we're still uh, talking about it's not totally decided uh, there is you could still really have a serious debate where the junction should be integrated where whether you should keep certain functions inside Lisa. I, I leave it open on purpose. We have a, a bit of a round table later. Um, yeah, there, there has been the idea, for example, that nowadays, at least 
Pixar is only controlled by MIDI. And actually, just in the straightforward 7 bit MIDI range, which for a lot of parameters is really low resolution. So we came, we thought, well, why not make this an all new version, get rid of MIDI, just let it be controlled with OSC. Junction can do all the translations if you want with OSC. A lot of people already use joysticks or whatever kind of other controllers which you connect to Junction anyway. So let it spit out OSC messages and that's. But of course, then again, there are still quite a lot of people who just have MIDI controllers. And then they would have to use Junction. So for us, this is constantly a debate. What are we going to do? The one thing that I do know is that if we decide also to do MIDI support, then definitely it will have the MIDI double position support. Meaning that you can have 40 bit control over most of the parameters if your instrument, whatever it is, supports uh, MIDI double precision. If you use junction, by the way, then that will support the uh, double precision. And, of course, the new Lisa will also have direct OEC support. And because that is definitely something that you can use to use higher resolution. Uh, another thing that we've been thinking of is get rid of this whole 16-channel uh, limitation which was initially forced upon us by MIDI. Uh, well, you know, Lisa has 16 voice layers. And if you want, of course, you don't have to split it up into 60 MIDI channels, but this number comes from the, uh, the original 16 channels idea. So no, we're not talking about that anymore. It's completely free. We're not talking anymore about um, a restriction of parameter control per voice layer. No, I would say do parameter control per zone. And how are you going to start and stop zones, not only by note events? Decide whatever event you want to start and stop zones. So we're, the idea is to get rid of or to go away from the sort of old-fashioned keyboard approach, where you have five octaves or whatever. No, a much more flexible approach now, where you can decide for uh, you have a certain zone, you want those events to start it, maybe you put uh, a restriction on that zone that it will never play more than 25 voices or whatever. And so make it more flexible in that area. So the other thing that brings is, us, uh, yeah, it's because it's good to mention this, it, there's this very interesting uh, debate uh, we had about the interface. Because right now, you know, you're looking at one kind of generic buffer where you know you see one zone, the last zone, you hit uh, kind of move around, and so you're missing a lot of activities as well. So there's always been this thing like, oh, look at all these other uh, like multi-track imitation programs where basically you, you look at the screen whether it's Ableton or, or Logic Audio and Windows, and you have kind of represent, representation of multi-track system with one timeline scrolling through that thing. Now. Uh, it's practical for many people, but I always thought, well, you know, why, why do you need those metaphors uh, for stuff like what we are doing? And, and I never thought you would even think of adopting such metaphor. But then one day the thought came, like, if, if you want to see all the zones that you have, um, you know, programmed and see the different activities, it would be really nice if you had indeed like a, a, a good screen where roughly you can see the wave shape and or the waveform and and indeed see its its own little counter uh, or, or uh, reading point or run and and then actually when I thought about it you you see the screen you have all these tracks to the normal people but we know it's zones and if each zone would have its own pointer within a sec split second somebody understands the difference between you know a normal multi-track uh, program and, and Lisa because Lisa allows you to have all these multiple pointers run independently. So independently. independently. And it's actually I've tried this out in, in the workshop, just draw it, and people immediately understand the difference. And we always had a problem, you know, with new Lisa users to explain 
how it does. Ah, okay, so you move to one space only. No, actually, it's all these little spaces that we call zone. But, so we might actually experiment with, with the layout where you can you know, stack a number of zones that you want to keep track of in, in the order you want, and then see these, these different things run. Because you all know that now you only see the last one, and it's not always the most important one. And uh, so, I mean, it's, it's information, but it's a bit no information as well. I even sometimes, when I'm rehearsing, trigger an extra note to be sure where I am. You know, like it's not a non-musical activity that produces musical uh, results. So it's, well, we know that in our processes that is even conceptually okay sometimes, but not in my case. So, so there is there is these discussions that we're having in, in, in respect to to what Frank is uh, being saying, and I thought. It was good to mention this. Yeah. Uh, another issue is the, uh, the fact that Visa is very much a sample buffer memory program. Uh, the idea is you have to reserve an amount of memory, and that is where you put your samples in. And there are good reasons to say that you want to do it that way, because if you have a sample which is five minutes long and within a split second you want to jump from five seconds to three minutes for 34, you know, it needs to be there. For the average user, this is something that they might sometimes use, sometimes not. So why make this decision? The idea now is that for the user it will be completely transparent if the sample is on your hard disk or in memory. The only it will be the same. It will be completely the same. So it's not memory. Different. Yeah, well. And it means that um, memory is not an issue anymore. And the, 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 the sample data will be available. There are, of course, for the people who really want to do these weird jumps, they have a file which is an hour long. And within a split second, they want to jump from the first minute to the last uh, minute of the file. In that case, you either decide you don't care that there will be a little bit delay because it has to load that part into the memory. Or you say, no, I want it to be available. And then you will have to make a choice how much memory do you reserve for it. And so, but uh, you might say in the normal, if you're dealing with the whole stuff in a normal way, it doesn't matter anymore if files are in memory or on the hard disk. So that's a few of these ideas have been, well, actually quite a lot of the ideas have been written down. And now we are going to do experiments with it, with the user interface, with the new features. The fact, for example, that each zone will be able to use its own audio units and so that you can have the parameter control uh, Per zone, also for the audio units, which will be made extremely flexible. Of course, it will be more CPU load, but as we have seen, these new machines are very powerful. We have it, we have the audio units running, by the way. So yeah. it's, it's, it is possible. <clears throat> Maybe it's a good moment either to have a little break or to uh, open up for some questions. I don't know, but what, what, uh, we've been talking uh, more than one and a half hours, so according to the normal knowledge, uh, concentration goes down <laughs> rapidly now. So maybe a little break, and then question time. Uh, there's no protest, so <laughs> am I correct? Should we save the question for after? Or you want to do this question now? That's okay. I think I'll do it. Shall we save it for after this question?
about anything, but, um, you had a question about memory. Yeah, yeah, I was just, I was wondering, because um, you said it, it won't make any difference anymore. Or do you mean just semantically, like, the user doesn't have to make this explicit decision, unless, say, there's a funnel over a certain threshold size, but we need to manage Because, you know, when you talk about random access, random access memory, that's why it's called that. Are you just really talking in terms of the interface? It becomes transparent. They don't have to say up front as a preference. I want my block rate in five seconds or six hundred seconds. That's the idea. Okay. And so basically, um, you can use files with any size. And so that's the idea. Is there such thing as a load up front? Um. Good question. Well, the thing is, first of all, I will have to do some experiments with that. Because what is extremely important is, indeed, when you do a quick jump, uh, how fast is something loaded into memory? Yeah. And it might be that it's way too slow. Mm -hmm. Then we will probably go step away from this whole idea. Well, especially if, you and if it takes at least 500 milliseconds, then you cannot do this jumping anymore. Well, when you were talking about the conversion of floating point on the sample world, yeah. is, are you talking about uh, when, you're, when you're loading the setup or when you're loading the individual sample? When conversion? you're loading, when I'm loading the sample. When you're loading the setup, so that could be an issue. It might be, yeah. but as I said, you know, the conversion is going quite quickly. Okay. I mean, these machines are so much faster than the old machines. So I, that, I we will have to do some testing with that. And uh, but if, for example, there is a very small delay, then you, as a user you could decide. You may, it might be that you will be given some decisions to make. Do you care or, or do you not care? Because if you do care, then it might be that you indeed will have to sort of mark that particular file that it should stay into memory. That's fair. But the idea is that you don't, that's at least what I thought of, why would you always be forced within this restriction of a buffer that particular size? Because we also noticed that especially beginning design users, when you start a design for the first time, you get 60 seconds of sample buffer. Mm -hmm. And of course, since people don't read manuals anymore these days, they come up with questions, well, I mean, the buffer size is very small. Can I not use, can it not be bigger and so on? And it would really be nice if you need, as you use it, you don't have to worry about it. It's, it's just there. You don't say RT anymore. <laughs> 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 I'm just thinking it a lot You're of times. Just thinking it a lot of <laughs> no, I mean, cool. I mean, I know about that because I have like a spreadsheet say, well, hmm, I have 10 people in this group, and I want to be able to sample all of them into discrete zones, and I want melody sounds, and I want bed sounds, and I want this and I want that. I actually have a spreadsheet, and then I say, okay, I want this type of zone, I'm always going to have it be 15 seconds, okay, plus 15, plus 15, plus 15, and then I can say, okay, I need a 610. So yeah. Perfect. So there's a lot of calculus and things, yeah. thinking to do for your setup. Yeah. And of course, if you are a power user, that's not so much of an issue, but it, it would really be nice if you make a system where, in a more intuitive way, um, yeah. um, you could use this stuff. It would be interesting to see what the test would. Yeah. Because then maybe there's no such thing as a word sample. No, exactly. Okay.
Well, um, first of all, it might not be that junction as it is will be implemented with more functionality. Functionality of the program. Yes. Another thing which basically just came up in my mind when Michelle was talking about this, um, that you could use a junction configuration file to configure the, the inputs and the data handling in Lisa as well. Mm -hmm. That would be another oh, option. a player for junction. Yeah. Yeah, something like that, where you don't do the interface design over there, but you can u just use that particular one. So that if you are experimenting, and when you're setting up, you can just use your the two programs together. But when you're performing, again, you just have the dedicated engine, where you can use the junction configuration, the release setup, and maybe together it will, you, you, of course, you will say it as a whole new thing. So Lisa will then always have the number of inputs available, like a, a whole matrix even. Yeah, because that's then. another thing that I was thinking about. Nowadays, the parameter modulation in Lisa is always restricted to one particular kind of controller, either a MIDI controller or a modulator. And of course, some of these modulators can be controlled as well. But it's very linear. And it's much nicer if you have a sort of matrix where you decide, OK, I want this particular controller and that modulator together to be able to modulate a particular parameter where you can even set the range of the two inputs and so you have a more f flexible way of doing it. The thing of course is we can think of zillions of new features. No problem at all. And we do. We do that. And you do. <laughs> but as Michel already stated, now it, I think we should also focus very much, and that is more for us, on something where we basically present the user a number of uh, how do you say options. options and limit that. If you step into your car, you don't want to control everything of the engine. You know that lots of that control is done in a proper way by the internal computer, whatever. And, and I think this you, you you can we can also at least give it a try to make something like that. We've always been very wary of doing this because the, the whole analogy of a driver and a, I mean as soon as you go on the racing track you have a whole team of exactly people and you want to be that team or direct that team. So also a lot of us work in a conceptual idea that the next piece is going to have a totally different setup. So you want to be able to get under the hood. So that, that is also something that, that uh, I think should be part, remain part of design, it should still keep its importance, no matter what we build on top. I really see it as different layers that you could even maybe separate uh, uh, if, if you, know, you could throw away that top layer uh, easily if you don't want to see the stuff you're doing in, in that way we were going to be presenting. And the, the, the interesting thing is that basically in the old days of just hardware synthesizers, the designers were confronted with the same, same thing. They released machines with presets, which were read-only memory and so on. The machine would not sell at all because the user said, I cannot change any sound. Then they would release machines where which would have presets. And you would create all your own sound. DX7, DX7, for example. And the companies and then, got them back and they, people didn't change no. it when the machine broke They down. didn't change anything at all. All the old presets were there. Yeah. But in, in our case, that's different. And I think the, the, the dilemma that we have, but maybe we shouldn't spend too much time on this topic uh, in the end, because it's clear for you as a group who uh, are sitting in that we all want this to be able to dive under the hood. And, uh, but. The point is that we get a lot of people who are not ready to do that. And what, what does Stan do? Do we cater, you know, this, this really uh, exclusive group of, of high-class people? Yes, that has a very high priority because it's an important, uh, uh, that's where development takes place. But the other group shouldn't be left alone. And this is where, where we try to create a, a solution by putting that layer on. I'm not 
not sure if it will work. Because somebody who has a bit of a mind will say, ah, but I want to dive under there too. And then the whole story starts again, you know, like about to read the manual. And so, so I mean, it's an experiment for us to do something, you know, to, to, to be more open to people that probably can get away with it uh, in a more easy way. But there is another interesting thing. I mean, Christina, who is sitting in the corner there, but who is, in fact, an interaction designer, but she's doing the reporting of this meeting. So, here these days. But Christina has been uh, very instrumental in stimulating us to kind of, for the sake of experiment, drop this multi sensor approach. Just see what can you do with one sensor. And it turns out if you look at the objects that maybe Frank can show later in the week, uh, like this little shaker that, that, you know, if you make a junction program, the program to, to translate these very simple movements you can do it is still quite a big junction uh, program. So uh, it, it, if you want to do very simple ideas in terms of sensor um, relationship, sometimes the software you need is, is quite complex. And the question will be whether you can uh, embed a number of modules in that software that, that do you know, higher level functions. And, and if you do that, there's always a problem. Oh, no, but there's somebody who wants to program that. You know, it's, it's always this, this trade-off. And with Lisa, we, we, until now, we've really tried to keep it as open to programming as possible. But indeed, we get lots more people who, who don't want to be programmers who want to use it. And musically, we are very interested to work with them because some of them are excellent musicians or very good artists. And well, so I, know, I know a lot of people who use Lisa and have decided to use that program instead of Max, for example, because they don't want to go into this programming thing. And of course, if people really want to get everything out of it, then I always say, well, use a program like Super Collider or Max. I mean, I think Super Collider is even more powerful. But then you really are becoming a programmer. And if you want that, great. But a lot of people don't. I think you worry about I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I was just throwing something into this. And it's also what I thought you were saying about uh, the idea of having, for instance, uh, having it more open and maybe even uh, you know, imagining visualizing many more of the features. So make, basically making it a bit more modular in that sense uh, and going away from this metaphor of what you call the keyboard metaphor, which uh, I'm wondering isn't that then just going the same direction? Because I find it quite charming to have the limitations of these layers, these 16 layers and these, uh, and these 32 parameters, which I hardly ever use all of them on one layer. So I wonder whether and maybe that is a need. Yeah, but this is the under the hood thing. No, but under the hood is also connected to the metaphor. If you, for instance, look at Ableton's uh, life's metaphor, it is a mixer. Mm -hmm. The visual interface is a mixer, that's why it's so successful, because everybody that's doing sound has ever used the mixer. So that it's very easy to understand. The, the, the metaphor of, uh, of Super Collider is code, a bit more difficult scripting. Mm -hmm. The metaphor of uh, uh, Maximus Peace Meccano, Ligo. Flowchart. <laughs> okay. Flowchart. Yeah, so in a sense, and if you look at that uh, to some extent, your metaphor has been uh, the, the limitation, uh, the constraints, not the limitations of. Uh, well, in a way, this idea to move to this kind of multi track but with individual reading pointers could, could, uh, would, could be a good replacement because I, I wouldn't mind getting away from that keyboard. Yeah, because yeah there, there is not, I mean, the keyboard is not the typical uh, electric uh, musical instrument anymore. Nowadays, it's more the computer keyboards. Well, know, or the mixer, the little fader box. Yeah, the fader box or the joystick. Which is a metaphor, it's, as long as it's a clear metaphor, yeah. I mean, that's the point. You yeah. know? And to some extent, the keyboard happens to be the one that sticks with this. Now, of course, you already got, got rid of it by having the player, which doesn't have the, the keyboard, which doesn't show the keyboard anymore. So by definition, that's not necessary. So for me, the question then is, if you start thinking about, for instance, uh, more detailed processing on a zone level, you know, and when I use zone, I use anything from, from 20 to 100, because I use them at different times in a different preset on top of each other. How do, you know, what is the metaphor of letting all this see? You click on a zone and then it gets arranged, and then I can take a snapshot of these zones, or how, how
how do you deal with that? What is well, the, the, the point is a little bit that, that the keyboard, of course, is such a generic thing that it's not hindering most of the people too much. So, I mean, you have now this piece of software that sort of mimic uh, you know, two spinning uh, records on your screen. And, uh, you know, and it, and it certainly then also has to be like scratching it. And uh, so that, that for some people that would be, you know, great and for, and for many people probably because they feel like, oh, I'm doing it. And, but for a lot of us, it would be like, come on. <laughs> like, I mean, it's true that the keyboard has, has as a metaphor something, yeah, yeah, a piano can be used by anyone. That is, but still, if we could get to something better, but without being too strong as a restrictive image, you know, that, that, that's the problem. You, I mean, in that sense, it's interesting. We had this discussion at nine, and, and Taco was in the panel as well. And we had two uh, spinners, so to say, and I was talking with Eric M. And we had Marco Stropa, and who, you know, a bit leaned back from his composer's point of view, said, well, you know, we as composers have to think about, you know, you write for an instrument, and we hope the instrument is still there in 100 years because we want our places to. I mean, that was his concern. Now, he's one of the nicer guys in that scene. And uh, so he said, but yeah, you have to, it's a fact that the turntable is a new instrument. Uh, it's, it's something very accepted, and, and it's one of the few metaphors that is new in sort of semi-electro music. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's electronic music, but, uh, you know, like, it, it, for many people, you should consider it as, as one of the majorly played electronic music instruments. So the next step would be to say, well, then Chaos Pad uh, probably is the next one on the list, because that's really used a lot by people. And, uh, I mean, if you look at the metaphors that, that attract people, uh, besides the one that really mimic all the instruments, like, you know, all the drum pads and, and the hand sonic uh, percussion thing from Roland. Uh, so the ones that really imitate traditional instruments. There's, so the only new one you could say is the record player, the way, but that's a reused one. So then the only new one that remains is, is the chaos pad. I mean, it's already in this but... Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. It's been there in, uh, in hyper, uh, in much earlier uh, yeah. software, in the hyper the blue screens. screens. Yeah. Exactly. But the question then really is, what is it that we want? Because for me, uh, it's, a, it's an organizational matter. When I play, I don't want to see anything. I turn the screen off or whatever. So I don't need it because I've always maintained there's actually something else happening while I play. Because if I look at the screen, my visual senses get occupied and I'm actually listening to this. I've seen this with a lot of people when I said, well, you you know, either you know what you're playing now or not, just turn off the, uh, the brightness of your screen and let's see what it's going to sound like. And usually it sounds more interesting. So okay. for me, the question is, what is it that, since we're sitting in a sort of semi-developer around here, what is it that we need? You know, well, what, the what we want, uh, just to give you an answer to the question, is an instrument that allows, you know, to have as easy access to sound manipulation as possible and uh, using metaphors that are uh, the least hindering for your uh, imagination and and that is probably quite an endeavor i mean yeah. it, it is are there other suggestions maybe for metaphors i mean that i don't have a, a definite suggestion but i i don't understand the problem with the limitations i i mean all the instruments the acoustic instruments are Nothing about limitation, but it's not a big problem when you're a I mean, it's it's nice to have. Anyway, for, for my simple brain, I I need physical limitation. I really like lists. It, it doesn't. I don't have any problem with the connection to create. But the, the, it's, it's not so much the limitation as such, or to my mind, as as what it represents. And personally, I find a keyboard uh, very uh, repulsive. <laughs> and, and also, I find that in, in, in effect, in Lisa, it actually refers uh, very strongly to the old school hardware samplers, which were a real pain. I mean, I always found a real pain to use. Um, um, yeah, I, I can't help thinking. I mean, what you were saying about uh, being able to use OSC in, in, in Junction now and abandoning MIDI. Uh, I find that very exciting because I mean it's just like uh, I mean OSC you can send a text message as well. I mean so you can be grabbing a text message from somewhere and doing something like that. And that's I mean personally I find that much more.
exciting as a uh, as an option, but maybe you know that they're not going to be using a node. That you can be using something which you, uh, you grab off the website and you know, send that as a text message to your thing, and that's what's going to be doing it. So I mean, it's mobile phone stuff. Who knows? I mean, you know, but I mean, I, I personally keyboards and the well-tempered scale and so on. I mean, I, I, I can't deal with it at all. I mean, I mean, it has no reason for being there. I, that sense. I mean, it's it, it came with MIDI, and at, it's, yeah. at, it, at that time it was practical, and it is a good moment to look at it again. Mm -hmm. You know, we can, do we still need it? That's basically the. Mm -hmm. and, and would there be another metaphor for the assignments? Well, it's very simple. It could be just instead of a keyboard, it could Maybe be like should have cooking. Cooking. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, uh, but, but maybe in, in terms of junction, maybe this, that's. I think the interesting thing about Junction is the fact that it, it adapts to any kind of interface that you can be putting into it. Mm -hmm. And there's maybe something which could be, maybe there's some kind of development to be done so that the interface that it adapts to are actually giving you some kind of interface which has, has a relationship with the physicality of that interface. And yeah, you hold the spoon in front of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, a, I, I don't know, I mean, just in terms of the no, controllers no. and the, and the uh, The adaptation uh, rejection is beauty. You could have an open source project where you ask people to, yeah. to do a graphical, yeah. no, graphical no, interfaces for each thing that uh, which they use. No, because what you see in our case is that we we uh, take over the you know like the first thing we, we adapted to was MIDI speak mm -hmm. keyboards this, this that junction basically adapts to what USB allows you to. Uh, so, I mean, that's why we think we should be a bit more proactive in thinking of design. Uh, but what you suggest is... Yeah. But, 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 no, but what I mean by that is that basically when you, it adapts to all the different USB uh, controllers that you plug into it, right? But you more or less know what they are. Okay? I mean, you plug it in and it recognizes it. Mm -hmm. So when you plug it in and recognizes it, it, it could maybe also load some kind of graphical interface which corresponds to that. No, that's true. Yeah. That's USB because device. they, but that's also because they, uh, all the USB uh, controller designers, you know, they stick to this protocol. And uh, and we would like, that, that's always the point, you yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, it's true what you say uh, that, you know, we get a lot of done, sometimes even all these limitations help us, you know, like yeah. it, and that's the whole idea with these are It's not an XMSP where you can do much work. No, the limitation is something that we we got something out of it that it was not just meant as an improvement of the sound quality, which apparently still is quite good compared to other software. But it was also indeed nice to have a limitation. So the, the, there is a double thing, and but since we are pretty limited, uh, we still think it could be a, an interesting idea to, you know, in one of the earlier versions, uh, you could, you didn't have the keyboard as a given thing. You could sort of define little squares yourself. There is a version, a very early. That uh, was the big machine. No, no, I know, but, but you know, it's it, it still like, it's the control yeah. part that had the possibility. Like, instead of grabbing a keyboard, you could just grab the little squares and they would have a reference to, to you know, a slot in the system. And then you could shape it yourself. And uh, I thought that was really nice. And I still think that would be a nice approach, basically, you have a toolbox to make your own reference system. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to have your keyboard, no, I'm just putting you in that corner. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the end, any type of arrangement that lets you, that lets you visualize something would be fine. But, but I On the other hand, the, the joysticks, you know, for instance, you hack a joystick and the thing looks like a, uh, like a big uh, object. And you look nothing at the joysticks and you see the joysticks in front of you. I'm not sure I really yeah. have no, 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 I think of maybe, military no, technology. No, but maybe not that, but maybe, I mean, when you do, yeah. I mean, basically when you, you hack a joystick, you're using XY, right? So, I mean, uh, and what you get is two little uh, horizontal cursors. Well, right? maybe, maybe it would be nice to have something which comes up which gives you the XY thing. I mean, which is basically going to be your your main um, controller thing. I don't the know, thing is, buttons, I don't know. Whatever. It's just, I mean, not, not with actually a visual representation. Of the, yeah. 
does an other example, sorry if I just say this, though. imagine it was done here at the same time, you used the spreadsheet, mm. which has no interface. So if you just pure numbers, there was no interface. Actually, the, the, the one metaphor behind it was the computer keyboard, and the mouse, which you could actually drive the whole, the whole program on all levels. And so I came into these at the later stage as well, that sort of flexibility of using the keyboard as an as a interim instrument. And there was never a, Tom and I have said, and I think together with Michelle, they were very clear about it. It's so complex at that time, there was no interface. So there was not a metaphor behind that except a spreadsheet. And when it went into the keystroke phase, we're having these little, uh, it, they, they, when it moved to the VAR, they made a little interface which used a spiral idea of where you could go and you could find out what was linked to which one, sort of a semi-max idea, but again, with these, and then, I, mean, I know people work with it very much, but in the end, again, the metaphor died so quickly. So, you know, there is also a question of how quickly do you, you know, when you find something which is abstract, you know, you know, well, I, 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 I don't know, I mean, how long is that? My mind is more in the, in the plug and play mode, but, you know, because ultimately that's what you're saying. I mean, is the idea is to make this available to, um, to, 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 to people who yeah, are plug and play, plug and, play thing, and, and ultimately maybe the deep, deeper down, yeah. and maybe become like some kind of scripting thing, you know, which is. Uh, like in your big eye. Like in your big eye, yeah. Thanks. I mean, um, whereas the, 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 I'm sure there is, um, I'm sure there is a, a public for a, a plug and play reader, yeah. you know, and it's, so it's more in that, you know, but it's more in that than saying that maybe the, the, the keyboard in that context doesn't make that much sense. You're saying that it's something where you've got a combination between these zero junctions, so you can plug in any kind of USB interface and then you get a keyboard. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's a discussion that is uh, that is not ending here and today. Uh, so, so if ever you come up with uh, suggestions in that area, uh, yeah. Well, I possibly have a suggestion for a metaphor. I don't know how many feels about it, but I'm seeing a lot of gesture as people speak, and I'm wondering whether like a, a model of the human form would be a gesture. I'm thinking as a musician actually. I haven't got a very detailed reason on at all. I use a lot of hardware stuff.
like an actual animated three-dimensional monk. He taps his hands together very gently while he's not doing anything. And sometimes his eyebrows go up and down. And then when he plays, his, his, his whole demeanor changes. And when I, when I use that with people who don't know software at all, they really latch onto it. I was interested in that thing when we were making it, they were saying that Frank Zappa was very against computers because they don't have eyebrows. But they've got really good eyebrows on them. They really really his eyebrows on I just think that that's a metaphor that we've got somewhere really hardwired deep inside us where we look at people and, and we can use that information. Then it might be worth switching the screen on. I really believe that you're right about turning the screen on. But if there was something like that happening, and I'd be tempted to have it on projectors so I could just glance at it and see what his eyebrows are doing. Maybe eyebrows is enough. <laughs> You already have a feature in the existing Lisa that would facilitate that very nicely, which is the fact that some components are separable as libraries. So the more that you modularize in the software, and then you see all of us as a resource, who are going to go off and create a 22 node Raga scale and throw it in a tuning library, yeah. a custom tuning library, and someone else is going to create a I had like a 33 step envelope library that I use so that when I roll my mod wheel, I get some range of um, some variation on attack and release. Mm -hmm. um, all those different things and more, I really, really strongly believe that each table should be a library. So that then I could make my, Dino can make all of his yeah. crazy, you know, temp precision tunings that he's got and upload them to the Stein website so for everyone to share and then your novice users can say, oh neat, I can I can apply this with this and that with that and not have to put the, the time into it that, that all of us do what we want to do. And then you have the rest of both. Yeah. Yeah, it allows you to separate the data and collect yeah. yeah, the more you can separate and then we can dive in and customize, but also share. But isn't that the almost next line approach? Um, Not yet. It's only like a table, say. Only yeah. as much as a, as a table. That I could use someone else's tables or, or curves. It's just adding table. some libraries. I mean, I it's only turning the things that you've already got. No, oh, it's just more of that. At time we get a lot of artists um, uh, the, the biggest example was always with the sense work. Michelle is still using that mm -hmm. system. It's a fantastic system, but you have to be, have, or you have to have a programmer's mind to really program it. Mm -hmm. So we've had a lot of artists here who use the sense lab, but basically we have to do the programming. Which is not so much of a problem because in a lot of cases these instruments and those are, are not changed. And those are people who do program. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's not the, the yeah. and so you could end up with a, a new version of Lisa that there is an artist who comes here and doesn't want to dive into, then I could say, okay, I'll make the setup uh, and then use it. But a program like Lisa, um, how do we say that? It's, you want to, as a user, you usually want to do much more experimentation with it. Mm -hmm. So very quickly, I get a call, oh, things are not working properly, can you help me and so on. Mm -hmm. And of course, that is our problem. We have, we don't have the resource to constantly help the artist to go and stuff on the road. But, yes. but, but what the guy is presenting is a, a, a possibility of some stuff can happen in the community. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to deal with it. The only thing you do is to provide more access to the program by putting things more open in library. Like you need to tune in now, it's not in a separate library. And that, that way, you, know, you can cater to... I think it's the <laughs> always says no. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I come to an idea. This is why no, I start talking I, to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because I'm the one who has to say, well, and, but you get really sharp by having to respond to that. Yeah. 
Yes. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, but I, I just think I think uh, the more that you make into libraries, and you know, they're all they're all very simple to work on individually, and then you guys can take the libraries that we all upload and submit and we're willing to share and combine them in some model way for a particular artist. I'm not talking about any like, really, really in-depth stuff. I'm just talking about some of the things like libraries that you would want to do once and not have to do it. No, it's a very good suggestion. We should really critically look how much stuff we could say on stop it. <laughs> <laughs> how much no, stuff we could I mean, I think it's a great idea, but I'm constantly, but no, I'm, I'm constantly also thinking as a non-power user. Mm-hmm. And I'm, 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 that's why I said, isn't it, this going to be more, very much the next one? No, but the non-power user certainly loads this, finds this uh, library of tunings, and yeah. can just select one of the tunings yeah. instead yeah. of having so what happens if something uh, does not work properly? Well, then they call you or then they call me. Yeah. So if something yeah. why would something not work right with a two? It should be programmed right so it works. It's a, it's essentially a table. It's essentially a table. No, 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 no. Yeah, with the tuning is a clear example, but I'm not only thinking about the tuning. We will seriously take that. this into consideration. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an excellent suggestion. Okay. I, I just saw it as a really easy way to accommodate both audiences of the users. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, for a big part, this can already be done because all no. basically, except for the tuning, exactly. all the other stuff is available as libraries. Yeah, but I think, so yeah, why is but I think, has, I think it has to be a little bit, a little bit more maybe uh, integrated with like the instrument idea or the preset. Because now, for example, if you load uh, controllers without the tables, then you have a problem. Yeah, and this is really technical. So yeah. this is also not for a non power user, I think. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you integrate this and make it into one yeah, preset, so then you don't have separate libraries anymore. Well, it but can be based on one table yeah. from the library. The matrix idea that you have would be a way to yeah. integrate it and also to point out where there is a hole. Oh, you're going to have a problem here because you've got this library requiring this library. You need mm-hmm. to solve it now. Yeah. You can also see it in the all as tables. Uh, no, it's a good debate uh, we can have, but it's a good debate. Is it, um, yes, is it? Is it uh, really the case in the visual arts? I mean, I know, uh, let's put, this is just an observation, and I don't mean it negatively, but how long are people going to keep making installations? I mean, isn't that going to be, are we kind of almost to the end of it? I don't know. But, I think it's just um, but, started. But yeah. it's, I think it's just started. Just started. But it's yeah. been around for 20 years. No, now. come on. There's, no. there's good stuff. I, 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 on another occasion, I don't think I it's a value judgment, but it's almost like an installation kit. I mean, isn't the essence of, of being someone who makes an installation that you're going to really learn to make it? And it's all okay. I get the kit to be sent Oh, maybe, maybe that is okay. Maybe I'm being. No, I, maybe I, that's. I, I think there's a lot more. I'm going to play installation kit. <laughs> <laughs> I think it really is just start. There's a mark. And, and what you're talking about is is uh, is a whole still a new, a relatively new development, or relatively because it's older than a lot of other music, to be honest. But exactly. In some cases, but he but the whole idea that interaction can be designed, yeah. and that that um, the, the technical knowledge there is very low, and, and this whole idea, even in our community, if 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 you talk about okay, you have a sensor, and what what do you do before you know? Most of the people will still will you will use it as a linear kind of thing that it goes from zero to somewhere, and that's it. I mean, this idea that you can look at it as a whole collection of points that can have totally different relationships, with, and, and you don't have to be a mathematician to understand it. That is even in our community still pretty low. I mean, that criticism uh, applies to a lot of new technological, you know, oriented art and. I think you have to be extremely patient and optimistic and positive to, to look through that. And we see that, you know, also in V2, uh, there, there is uh, some projects that try to deal with meaning somehow, you know, to try to deal with social context. And there they start 
thinking about uh, you know what what is the really what it does socially in an installation. I think Peter can give you uh, lots of experience and examples of installations that you know have a bit more. I mean, just had a look next door, and uh, there is stuff growing there. And I think that the technology is also very limiting to people, and that is where I think we could. Uh, maybe publish some of our experiments through, uh, through these uh, uh, presets so that it also helps to make people uh, you know, start up a little bit faster and then we can look again. Yeah, because we've seen, you know, like there's, there's a, by now a bit of a famous example here of a, of a marionette player, a puppeteer that came in and, and did this uh, piece in France with just a chair and accelerometer but really worked on it for a while and and really explored all the possibilities, what he could do with sound by moving that chair in various directions. And that was totally technically done by Frank. And so they were both working at the tops of their, you know, what they were good at. And that project I thought was very interesting because it, it really you know, like a performance that had something going, you know. Yeah. And and it's true that that um, you know that we don't have all the knowledge. And, and and quite often if you have too much technical knowledge you're totally nervous on stage, you know, because you know what can go wrong. So this idea of having teams and, and separated a little bit again, you know, while you're on stage, or, or like with installations, to help people to develop those ideas. I think at least what Stan can do, and that's my basic drive to support this idea, is to give some of our experience to that scene, indeed, because it's true there's a lot of installations that are a bit boring, because after two, three rounds, you understand the system, and it's not surprising you. But as well, there's a lot of music that's, you know, and, uh, I think we should, first of all, look at the good examples and, and be optimistic about the fact that we could find more of that. And, uh, but I think that it's just starting. It's, and, and I think Peter, as far as I know, is somebody who can tell a lot about installation art and sound and uh, stuff, so you should. With that having been said, I mean, one could question whether Lisa would want to or not cater to the installation field as it were. I mean, you might you might say that uh, no, with the idea of restraint, that we're actually aiming at something because it's kind of a very uh, efficient, real-time uh, audio engine, ultimately, uh, and, and that it differs, for instance, from Maximus Big Wire, so pure data, because yeah. I make the switch. <laughs> yeah. Which a lot of I'm to quote uh, pure data these days from Maximus But uh, the, the, the advantage that it has over that is, is probably efficiency and, and, and simplicity, or we hope to get back to the same kind of simplicity. Uh, uh, and in which case, maybe in that, op, uh, that with that objective, it's not the best thing to try and think that maybe people are going to be doing, you know, installations which are on a totally different time scale. But then maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I think junction is very, very useful for the installation so you notice that. It's, uh, it's I, a combination I, of the two programs. I mean, all the, the, mm -hmm. there are exhibition stuff. Most of the instruments now that we create for the exhibition are using uh, junction. Lisa. And Lisa is mainly there just to be as the sound engine. Mm -hmm. Junction is doing all the data processing, making the intelligent decisions. Mm -hmm. oh, about what is the user doing? Is, is there is a lot of activity going on? Mm -hmm. And should something change when you don't do anything after a while? Those kind of stuff. But you could imagine, you know, like Junction with, with a player like, like we're producing now. That it's a very easy little tool set. If you have some, if you have the right preset, it's an experiment. It, I, I share a doubt, but I think no, it would be nice to try. Makes sense to me, but I'm just wondering how how wide the the uh, how wide the market is. Yeah. I mean, because it's if, for instance, I mean, what, what we were saying earlier about the keyboard and so on. I mean, which you know, I'm, I'm talking from a point of view of somebody who thinks of sound in terms of. Uh, days and weeks, um, not in terms of a performance type mode in general, you know, so installation stuff and so on, or process and, and so on and so forth. So I, that's why I find the keyboard repulsive because it's it's not made for that and it's uh, 
um, you like a calendar. For instance, yeah. I mean, well, what are, what are the suits? You know, what, what are the suits? But um, um, what was I talking about? No, but so I mean, it's just like in terms of, of uh, at, the, at the same time, there is that aspect which is uh, what's I mean, what you've concentrated on with with Lisa is making it really good at real time yeah. performance stuff. Okay, I mean, it's like um, and maybe that's you know maybe that's the thing to keep working. I think what, what, what our goal is with these presets on top of it is not to add functionality, but to sort of disclose functionality that is already there, but in a focused way. That, so it's kind of showing, okay, have you seen you can do this and that, and, and then it's put in red. I don't know. It, it, we, we have to try and we'll see. Anyway, it doesn't. It's something you can load on top and you can hopefully be redesigned it for your own purposes. It's almost like the, the old-fashioned synthesizers, you know, where the presets were basically a show of what can this machine do, do, what kind of power does it have, and you cannot show it all in just one thing. No, it can make this sound and then you can control that, but if you want something completely different, you go to this preset. But that means that, that uh, going back to the suggestion of having a, 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 a user you know, the well, kind of group sharing yeah. thing where people can put up stuff. That certainly makes sense in those terms. And maybe also something which could include a visual yeah. interfaces yeah. In, in terms of that. Yeah. Uh, which, a similar kind of thing, where you can have some kind of plugin which, which you can plug on a visual but now, now, if we would look. Uh, under this this level, under the place. So back at our present uh, um, um, Lisa um, interface, uh, what is it what you really would not like to see anymore? I mean, to start there. The Lisa has unexpectedly quit dialogue. <laughs> you can switch it off just system wide. <laughs> you can switch off the the, the dialogue. <laughs> yes, yes, but that doesn't. <laughs> Solve the problem. I always send it, but he never responds. Especially with this Are there interfaces that have just squares, like magic squares or something? Because you could just put these, in each zone is like a square and you could give it a color and organizations, and so it's not linear, but it's just, you know, in a the keyboard thing is, is it just came about so that you have a visual reference. Here's how I, here's what I have to do to trigger that song. Right? It could be a range of slots, yeah. you know, like a spot. Or just, or just like a table, like a desktop, where you put like yeah squares, or you can place them any way you want to mimic your. But like for instance, uh, there's a lot of new software like Indeed uh, Live and uh, what's it called, Traxfilm, that use this idea of using the whole screen all the time. And you can uh, have different, uh, you can fill it up. <laughs> oh, right. And you can move this thing. Maybe. <laughs> So this is still with, very much within the, the voice layer things, but the idea to have a, a keyboard or a, a visual interface which you can arrange yourself. Mm. And for Michelle's instrument, it will be like the arrangements of his keys, mm -hmm. because those are basically his needy notes events. Right. 